Welcome to another edition of Fourth and Paint, the only pro football, pro wrestling show to be hosted by an NFL player and a weight loss champion. That right there, boys and girls, is Redskins defensive end Adam Carricker. You can't see me. Yeah, appropriate with the gloves. That's why you got to watch this on our YouTube channel. Former wrestling announcer, weight loss champion Chuck Carroll here. Be sure to give the show a follow at Fourth and Pain and join us each and every weekday afternoon 1 p.m eastern fourth and pain.com brand new content adam it is time to do what we do best as grown man and that is talk about professional wrestling lots Sounds to talk good about. what you got lots to talk about by way of wwe of course we're creeping ever closer to SummerSlam at the middle part of this month and on raw this past week I mean, I just, I got to start here briefly. I know that this isn't in our agenda list, but McMahon's promo, Vince McMahon's promo at the top of the show, no bueno. But was bueno is the continuation of the Daniel Bryan, John Cena feud. And I'm telling you, I get so excited for this match right now. I can't even tell. It's like, you remember last week, Adam, when I was saying I'm a little bit concerned that I don't know how they're going to make this an actual match because you put two baby faces together in the ring. Well, this past Monday, they seem to solve that a little bit. Well, it's like I've been saying. I mean, obviously, Hogan versus Ultimate Warriors, two of the most popular wrestlers of all time. This is not on that level. But I'm saying I like the fact that it's not personal. I like the fact that it's just about who's more popular, who's more over with the crowd. You got John Cena, who's been the the face, the poster child, the captain of the WWE for nearly a decade. And then you've got the new hottest thing in the WWE for the past few months, Mr. Yes himself, Mr. Fear the Beer, Daniel Bryant. I love the fact that this is something different and not something you typically see. And I don't think it's a concern whatsoever. I also like what they're doing every week. Daniel Bryant still has to kind of prove himself because in order to get in this match, the fans, well, Cena picked him, but the fans kind of told Cena who to pick, but he didn't win a Hell in a Cell match, he didn't win the Royal Rumble, he didn't win anything like that, a number one contenders tournament. So I like the fact that he's having to prove himself, but I love the fact there's nothing personal, it's not good guy, bad guy, it is t the two biggest baby faces right now, there's CM Punk will be in there too, but two of the biggest baby faces right now going at it head to head, I love that. Well, here's my concern though, it's again, two baby faces, so where do you start this heat? I, and to me, it goes back to that, I hear what you're saying, and I'm sure that the match at SummerSlam is going to end in a handshake if this doesn't happen. I'm a little bit concerned because two weeks ago, Ryback obliterates Daniel Bryan, John Cena comes down, he makes the save, and then challenges Ryback to a tables match. Now, we've already seen Cena versus Ryback, why are they continuing to put Ryback into this feud. So this past Monday, you see Cena and Ryback at a tables match on Raw. And so now I'm wondering, you know, is there a chance, is there an outside shot that you're going to see Ryback thrown in there as a triple threat match with Cena and Daniel Bryan at SummerSlam? Is there an outside shot? Sure. A anything is possible. Maybe Lesnar, Punk, and Heyman are turning into a triple threat match. I don't know. I, I seriously doubt it. I think they're putting Ryback in there because he's the human wreck -a -ball, wrecking ball. He's the monster. He was helping get Daniel Bryan over. They've done Cena versus Ryback, and I they've done it for pay-per-view, so they just wanted to give it to the fans one more time for free. I would be very surprised if the guy who's never won a pay-per-view match Never won a big time. He's never won a match on the weekend. That's all you need to know. That, that's, that, that is what you need to know about this guy. He's not going to be in a triple threat match at SummerSlam. And if he is, that is, a, that is just a horrible mistake. But it will not happen. It's going to be Brian, Cena, and I actually love it. All right. Well, you talk about triple threat matches. I'm really curious to get your thoughts here because for the first time, you're seeing Curtis Axel get involved in the CM Punk Brock Lesnar feud there. Of course, Paul Heyman in the thick of that as well. But are we looking at a point now where you might see a triple threat in that arena? No, it's it's going to be seen. I mean, I was joking when I said they might put the Walrus Paul Heyman in there. It's going to be CM <laughs> Punk and Brock Lesnar, one-on-one. -on -one. That's what everyone wants to see. And then everyone wants to see what happens after the match. Win, lose, or draw for Punk. Does he get his hands on Heyman? Does he get his personal revenge? Curtis Axel's in there because he's a Paul Heyman guy. He's in there because they're trying to give him a push, and just being in association with CM Punk and Paul Heyman automatically elevates him. Curtis Axel's more well known than Michael McGillicuddy ever was, and Curtis Axel's only existed for what two months now. Yeah, yeah. So 
Uh, I, I think he may have a match with Punk before SummerSlam. He may be involved in this somehow, but I would be shocked if they made that a triple threat match. You got two great matches. Cena, Brian, you got Punk, Lesnar. Don't mess with those matches. They're great. Going to be really cool, man. And and hopefully here uh, in the not-too-distant future, we're going to have one of the guys from the SummerSlam card on this very program. We'll be making that announcement shortly. By the way, you're listening to Fourth and Pain with Redskins defensive end Adam Carricker. I am former wrestling announcer, weight loss champion Chuck Carroll. So check this out. Here's a conversation, Adam, you and I had off the air this week. You were talking to me. You passed the hours in rehab sometimes while they're cranking on your knee you turn on the youtube videos you just watch them on your phone and you stumble across this video of the undertaker at a ufc fight where brock lesnar was and i assume that this wasn't a recent video because as as i understand it uh undertaker's in the middle of doing an interview for the tv just not in character he's just there watching and he locks eyes with brock lesnar who's walking i guess back to the locker room or something like that and he just turns and he says what you want to do this now you want to do this now like he's gonna want to go at him what's going on there well it was awesome and and it kind of connects to us because we just did our tournament of, of real life fights we took the top eight guys in wwe history pro wrestling history who we thought would win in a real life fight and it turned out that Brock Lesnar, I don't know if we've ever announced it, won that tournament. Yes. So according to us, me anyways, not you, you took Shamrock, but in the fans and everyone who knows what they're talking about, we all said Lesnar would win that fight. Now, the video I saw, like, like you described it, Lesnar's at, at a UFC fight and he had just lost. And the guy happens to spark, uh, spot Mark Calloway, a.k.a. The Undertaker, up in the stands and he's talking to him, you know, well, what do you think happened? Were you surprised by this? And the Undertaker, you know, he's like, Brock, Brock's a big, beastly guy, blah, 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 blah. He's talking. All of a sudden, you see his eyes. His eyes go from what I am now to all of a sudden, he just locks eyes with somebody. You can tell it and see it. And he just kind of stares at him. And you can see he's following the individual. And then the guy's talking to him, and he kind of breaks away from it, leans in. And, you, and then that's when you see it's Brock Lesnar. Hmm. And he looks at him. He just simply says, you want to do it? And Lesnar looks at him, and then he keeps on walking. And so the guy ends up asking him, are you and Lesnar friends? Were you actually rooting for him to win this fight? And his responses were, it's very personal. Um, he, he needs to train harder. And what just happened between us should tell you all you need to know. So I thought it was very interesting because this, we, we talked about real life fights who would win. This is a real life feud. And it actually got me wondering what would happen if these two got into it. Now Undertaker didn't even make our top eight. No. Maybe that was a mistake on our part. I mean, he doesn't have much of an amateur background that I know of other than college basketball. But let's say, because he is, he is a real-life badass. He's a minister of darkness. He's the American badass. He's a real-life badass. A ton of people who know him have said that. Let's say him and Lesnar get into it. What happens? Does he have a chance? What do you think? Man, uh, I would like to say yes, because I'm definitely a bigger fan of Undertaker than I am Brock Lesnar. But... I don't think so. Brock Lesnar is a legit badass. And in my tournament, no, he would have, he would not have won. Ken Shamrock would have won that real fight tournament that we orchestrated, but I'm telling you, he would have been number two and it takes so much strength and ability to be a UFC champion that I automatically have to give the nod to Brock Lesnar based on size and skill. Now, his record wasn't great. I mean, I believe his overall career record was 5-3. and three. And don't forget, The Undertaker's almost seven foot three hundred. Brock, I'm not sure how tall he is, 6'2", maybe 6'3", and he's like about 275 now. So The Undertaker would have him in size, arm length, and things of that nature. And I'll tell you what excited me when I saw this video. He, not The Undertaker, did not back down to the national champion wrestler, the UFC heavyweight champ. He almost initiated it. He locked eyes, stared him down, leaned in. And you, Brock Lesnar was the one that walked away. Now, he was walking back to the locker room already. But I saw no fear, no hesitation. I saw the true badass in The Undertaker come out. And that's what intrigued me about this. You give him no shot? I mean... <laughs> Maybe one shot out of every 50 or something like that. But I'm telling you, you go back, you just hit the nail on the head. You just kind of made my argument for me. It goes all the way back to Brock's amateur wrestling background, a legit national champion. This guy has been a pure, true life badass for many, many, many years and a trained badass at that. Yes, The Undertaker is legitimately tough, but Brock Lesnar, legitimately tough and properly trained. To me, that gives him the edge. 
I think it would be interesting. Why don't we ask our fans? Hit us up at Fourth of Pain on the Twitter, the Facebook. Leave a comment on our YouTube, iTunes page. Let us know what you think would happen. Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar in a real life fight. Nice way to get the plugs in there, man. What uh, I'm talking about. Yeah, man. We're fresh out of time. This here is Fourth and Pain. Don't you go anywhere. Weight loss champion Chuck Carroll here with your weight loss tip of the week, and I've got four. Count them: four green foods that will help you shed the weight and get healthy and they are in no particular order get ready to eat your broccoli get ready to eat your brussels sprouts your spinach and your collards all four are packed with very few calories and a whole lot of vitamins and the beautiful thing is especially with the broccoli and the brussels sprouts you eat them your body digests them slower so you stay fuller longer consume fewer calories and you too will be a weight loss champion